anyway, I'm going to just, so just to kind of pitch that, it's very brief, I'm going to read, and I'm so glad that Pat came because it's about the Murray, and uh, so I'm going to just read this little bit, you know, um, from the Richard book as a kind of, um, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of like the ad before the main feature, you know, right. the newsreel, so it goes, okay. By mid-September, alone in his Pine Creek house, Browdingen had gone, grown hugely depressed. He moved into the Murray Hotel in Livingston. At the far end of a long, narrow hallway, room 211, was a dreary 10 by 12 corner cell with drab yellow walls and no toilet. Sorry about that. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> a single window with a pull string shade looked down past the fire, the hall fire escape onto a collection of garbage cans in the back alley. Um, there was a plain wooden chair and a one drawer desk supporting a tiny black and white TV, quote, full of fuzz and static, unquote. <laughs> the iron bedstead had been painted orange. Its cot-like mattress covered with an orange chenille spread. Like his lodgings at the Hotel Jesse, number 211 was a room where a man could easily go mad. Yeah. <laughs> One evening at the hotel, Browdingen encountered the film director Sam Peckinpah, who rented a suite on the third floor. They knew one another casually from brief encounters at parties hosted by the Fondas and the McGuanes. Richard invited Sam to drop by his room the following night for a drink. A lifelong fan of Westerns, with one of his own in development, Browdigan had a lot to talk about with the man who made Ride the High Country and The Wild Bunch. Knowing Sam to be a brandy drinker, Richard bought a bottle from the Murray Bar downstairs the next evening, the evening putting the price on his tab and asking for a couple of clean glasses. When Peckinpah arrived at room 211, Browdigan's 357 Magnum handgun sat out on the desktop next to the courboisier. <laughs> Richard poured them both a drink. Sam asked him, asked him about the heavy artillery. Protection, Browdigan said. Peckinpah understood, unfamiliar familiar with Browdigan's personal paranoia. He offered to fetch his own pistol and quote, liven the place up. <laughs> Sam returned in a couple of minutes with his 38 coat. Looking out Browdigan's open window, Peckinpah spotted an alley cat sitting on top of a garbage can and fired a shot. He missed the cat. The pistol's report echoed among the surrounding buildings. My turn, Richard said, firing two loud rounds. The twice-punctured garbage can rang like a gong. <laughs> what in the hell do you two think you're doing? Ralph White, the hotel's crusty manager, glowered in the doorway, wearing striped pajamas and carrying the office club reserved for troublemakers. <laughs> this was a lengthy speech for White, <laughs> notoriously taciturn, a yup and nope guy at heart. He lived in room 212, right next door, and had appeared instantly as if by magic. Target practice, Browdigan said. Sam, the permanent resident, sounded more apologetic. Like Richard at Rancho Browdigan, Peckinpah had also gained a dubious reputation for shooting off weapons inside his rooms upstairs. Not wanting any trouble, Sam promised Ralph he'd, quote, hang it up for the night, unquote. White nodded and wandered, wandered grumbling back to his room. Peckinpah and Browdigan put their firearms away. What they did next, if anything, is anybody's guess. <laughs> 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 now,